America is about invention, discovery, curiosity that pushes the limits into new frontiers, and ingenuity that makes life more convenient. From the modern kitchen to harnessing the digital age, from finding new energy sources to shooting rockets to the moon, Americans have always led the way with inventions that have literally changed the world. However, today's inventors are in a crisis. The legal framework which for centuries have protected inventors and their inventions is significantly diminished. This, in turn, has universally affected inventors across the country. These are some of their stories. To know that there's an ability to revoke a patent bothered me. I, I never thought that would happen in a million years. And it wouldn't have unless we had accused Apple of uh, stepping on our product and taking our IP. So in retaliation, they filed and unfortunately we have a system that allows that to happen. I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, I like to uh, approach things aggressively. If I believe in it, you can't talk me out of it. We went all the way for it. We put everything that we had, our resources, our time, our energy, uh, monies, everything to attack it vigorously and to get it out because we, we knew we had something that the world needed and it solved a very big problem. We were the world's first wireless uh, leash. So uh, when we knew that, I thought, man, this is great. We had just come off another very successful company. So it gave me the capital to invest uh, so in 90 days, we actually made a prototype uh, for CES. Toward the end of 2009, we went to work quickly, made a prototype uh, to enter in the January 2010 CES competition. So that's where we won Best of Innovation Award. We created ZOM out of a desire to provide protection and safety uh, for individuals and to kind of help people who might lose their phones. So the ZOM was known for doing three things. It would um, warn you if you ever walked away from your phone, like if you got too far out, the Bluetooth connection was, was broken. So it was proactive, not reactive. It wasn't find my friends. It was, you don't lose it in the first place. You only get a few feet away and you can get it. But the other uh, more important thing and significant thing was um, if you're ever out and need an emergency assistance, you could press down on the center button for a while. If you held down on it for a little bit, you would hear an alarm. And if you kept holding, it would dial 911 or 112 from anywhere in the world and give a, a pre recorded message saying that you're having an emergency, send help immediately, and then 911 would show up no matter where you were in the world. So it was a very big deal for us. We ultimately filed for a patent and, and uh, a trademark. Whether I'm an individual standing by myself or a trillion dollar company, whoever creates that product, that patent first, should have the right to protect it. We started getting good sales. We had uh, different companies like um, Best Buy, uh, some, some of the biggies out there. Uh, we had QVC uh, call us. We were able to go on QVC. We did very well there. Uh, we became what they call a today's special value on QVC. That means only a few products in the world get that. They feature them for 24 hours. and. So we rode that all the way up to the highest you could go in sales on, in that organization. Um, and then later on, we actually got a call from Apple 
wanting us to put it in their stores and they wanted us to make an MFI version so that it would qualify. So we you know, took some monies that we had in budgets for other things and instead of just using the, the product that we already made, we started making another product because we were very impressed that, that we had contact with Apple and they were gonna put it in their stores. So um, yeah, it was, a, it was a dream come true for all of us. From there, we went in some of the stores, we went through all of their, you know, jumped through all the hoops. If Back then, if you weren't doing a certain dollar amount a year, you had to go through a third party um, uh, like supplier where they would negotiate what went in what stores and all of that. So we worked through all of that, jumped through all the hoops. We thought we, because we worked so long and hard, you know, six, eight months to make an MFI compliant, that we were ready to go. But now you got to jump through all the hoops to actually get it into the stores, all the logistics and everything. So we went through that, got it through, uh, it was received well uh, in the Apple stores, and then they wanted to put it online. So we ultimately got it in their online stores as well. To make it MFI compliant, you sign documents that say that you know, you're both uh, obligated not to share that with anybody else, but uh, in making it MFI compliant, we had to raise the hood uh, a little on our invention and our secret sauce and um, made it MFI compliant. Initially, it was great. I mean, we were all, you know, cheering at home office because we're an Apple. I mean, imagine, yeah. you know, I, I used all Apple products and all of that. And it was a very exciting time uh, for us all. Uh, and, it, and it worked out good uh, up until we went out of their stores. And, you know, then, then we had a few problems arise. What is already public record uh, it shows clearly that, that, in our opinion, that they used uh, some of our IP in some of the products that they later came out with. Um, so, uh, yeah, that, that's all in public record, and, and we're certain on our end that they, they used our IP uh, illegally. And, um, you know, it was, it was a very, uh, after being so excited and wanting this relationship with a company like Apple, and having this reception from other entities all over the world to then kind of experience that, it, it, it turned everybody's stomach sour. <laughs> you know, it just made everybody kind of sick because what do you do against a trillion dollar company? From my understanding, I'm not an attorney. I'm just a very hardworking business person uh, who put everything I had in my life into this. Um, but from my understanding, I guess if you can invalidate a patent or say that your patent shouldn't have been issued, um, then that gives them to write the right to kind of sidestep any accusations that we may present to their company. So if I think their company used some of our IP in one of their products, which I'm certain it did, it still needs to play out legally, um, but for them to invalidate that, they would have to invalidate my patent first. And it's my understanding to date, again, what's been publicly filed, is that they have attacked our patent three times. Uh, not once, not twice, but three times and spent an inordinate amount of money doing that, which means I have to spend more money defending it or I have to just walk away. And I'm not the guy that walks away. I don't care what I have to do. If I have to give it all away to fight them and to get justice, I will. That's how adamant I am about it because I want to set that example. You can't put all of your life into something and have a whole team around you that's, that's hoping and wishing and praying for success and then have something go down the tubes just because you can't pay your legal bills. Legal bills. So, you know, I, I hope that's not you know, the, the path they keep going down, but they have attacked us three times. The question to my attorney is, we must have something because why would they attack us three times if we had nothing? Like I kind of see it as a badge of honor, but I also see it as a dart in my chest. <laughs> that, you know, it's like, like how, do you, how do you put those two things together? How do you reconcile that in your head? And so uh, anyway, again, I hope they do the right thing. I, I think it's, it's kind of an unfair process because if I have to defend my product of what I put money into and that the, the USPTO already told me that we were good to go and it was valid and I had some very good attorneys filing that for me. I didn't file this myself. 
but I had we consciously and and um, um, trying to keep everything in line and doing the exact right things that we were told by the book by the letter of the law we did all those things and they told us that it was okay and they issued our patent so now for me to to think that I have to go back and defend that when I was already told it was okay and if they keep questioning and questioning and questioning I mean it almost makes me wonder why did we even file in the first place if we're supposed to get that protection they're supposed to give us that right the very first time and say you're okay because they took a year two years doing it in the first place and now a company like that and it could be Apple or any other company can come in here's here's dollars to, to file uh, this attack and here's more dollars to file that attack and here's more dollars that makes me feel very unsettled